Good morning. Are we ready? Uh, why don't we uh, start this uh, press conference? This is the press conference that uh, we hold uh, every month before our legislative meeting. Uh, tomorrow is an additional legislative meeting. It's the council's meeting to uh, discuss and vote on the uh, proposed budget for fiscal year 2015. The fiscal year, as you know, starts October 1st, 2014 runs through to September 30th, 2015. Uh, because of the court's ruling last week with regard to budget autonomy, tomorrow will be the only vote on the Budget Request Act. The Budget Request Act, or BRA, is the budget. Uh, we have also tomorrow a consideration of the Budget Support Act, or BSA. The Support Act, because it's uh, typical legislation adopted by the council, has two votes. So we vote tomorrow, and then the second vote uh, currently is scheduled for two weeks from tomorrow, that is uh, June 11th. The Budget Support Act contains a lot of legislative uh, initiatives that uh, are generally related to and support the budget. Uh, that's why we call it the Budget Support Act. The mayor sent down the budget, a draft or proposed Budget Support Act about 150 pages, uh, for example, where the mayor has some proposals with regard to tax reform, that's in the Budget Support Act, for example, or um, other provisions that make clear what kind of regulation we want in place that uh, accompanies a uh, budget proposal, such as with regard to human services. Uh, this year, the mayor's proposal has a measure involving homeless service, homelessness, homeless services, as was the case last year. Those kinds of measures are in the Budget Support Act. Uh, we are hoping to circulate these documents uh, early this afternoon. Um, there are still, uh, the Budget Office is still um, putting some numbers in and doing the balancing and working with the Chief Financial Officer um, before that can circulate. Uh, I want to kind of go over in an outline fashion what the budget proposal and the Budget Support Act taken together uh, will look like tomorrow. First of all, the budget for the district government is roughly $11 billion, and typically when the council looks at the uh, budget, um, the overwhelming, by far the overwhelming majority of the budget are items that are not at issue that, of course, we have to support, let's say, uh, Medicaid, which is several billion dollars, or DCPS, which is uh, um, close to a million dollars. Uh, what we do is we look at typically somewhere around uh, maybe 30, 50, 70 million dollars at issue and um, try to improve some programs or or shift the funding from one year to the next or more emphasis for one program over another. Uh, what we will see with the budget tomorrow, and I will be, this is my recommendation to the council, uh, is um, that most of the uh, committee's recommendations will be, uh, as recommended, will be in uh, what I uh, circulate this afternoon. Uh, we will not be, um, However, there are a few exceptions. We will not be uh, cutting the training dollars, at least in my recommendation, um, to, in order to extend TANF benefits. The, um, the law right now provides that there's a step down in benefits for those who've been on TANF for more than the uh, five years, and that the step down is um, a 41% reduction. And uh, the Committee on Human Services had proposed uh, not having that step down, and instead the following year there would just be a complete cutoff. And uh, my recommendation is that we have that step down to ease the transition and that we not cut the training dollars so that people on TANF can get training, job training, and get jobs. Uh, we do fund the schools as recommended by the committees. Uh, we fund the United Medical Center at the rate recommended by both the Committee on Health and uh, Huron, who's the uh, government's consultant with regard to the United Medical Center. Uh, we sustain, this is uh, my recommendation, sustain the reduction to the South Capitol Street Bridge. That has to do with the um, eliminating the movable span, which drives up the cost by about $140 million. Um, we add about $2.3 million to the early child care subsidy program for a total of about $83.8 million. That was the committee's recommendation. Uh, there's $1 million for community schools program. That was the committee's, 
I think there were multiple committees recommendation. Uh, capital projects for neighborhood library schools and uh, recreation centers uh, will be in my recommendation as recommended by the committees. Uh, increase the offs on aging by about one and a quarter million dollars. That was in the committee's recommendations. Uh, provide two million dollars for teen pregnancy prevention as recommended by the health committee. Uh, Five million dollars to help the Humane Society relocate. They're on government property now on New York Avenue and need to relocate that facility. That was in the committee's, uh, multiple committee's recommendation. Uh, there's a $731,000 increase in bus subsidy for youth as recommended by um, committees. I think that was the Committee on Economic Development. The mayor had uh, had uh, recommended a budget of, um, I don't remember the exact amount now for homelessness, uh, I'm going to say around $120 million. Uh, Mr. Graham and his markup increased that by about $6.2 million, including dollars for permanent supportive housing. Uh, all of that will be sustained in my recommendation, plus an additional f almost $6 million, which would include, this is my recommendation, an additional $3 million for local rent supplement program, $2 million for the um, prevention plan, and um, <clears throat> $600,000 for case managers for families at uh, D.C. General to try to reduce that population. And uh, the minimum wage bill, which part of which was adopted last fall subject to appropriations, will be funded. The paid, safe, and sick legislation adopted last fall will be funded. And the wage theft bill, which is making its way through the council, will be fully funded. The um, Another aspect of uh, the, my recommendation will be several measures to try to improve um, fiscal prudence in our budget. So, for example, uh, there will be a requirement in the Budget Support Act for the Chief Financial Officer to develop a 15-year uh, capital improvement plan focusing on infrastructure replacement. That's something that we've not had. So that as we look at the capital improvement plan in the future, which right now is a four-year or five-year plan, that we would uh, actually have available to us a long-range 15-year capital improvement plan that identifies infrastructure needs uh, so that we can appropriately prioritize those. I think that's important to budget, better budgeting in the future. Uh, we'll have a provision directing that all debt service savings uh, would increase pay-go and reduce borrowing. Uh, the idea there is to try to um, increase uh, annual revenues of our capital improvements and to reduce the amount of borrowing we are doing. In uh, 2017 or 2018, our debt service will actually be greater than the amount that we can borrow that year because we have borrowed so much and are now have to pay for it. Uh, the um, Budget and Budget Support Act will fully fund the post-employment benefits fund and the fire, firefighter retirement fund at the full amount uh, recommended by the actuary. Um, you know, this has been an issue for the last several months, and with the uh, fire and EMS uh, pay contract coming before the council, uh, there's some issues with um, fully funding the uh, retirement and post-employment programs, and so that will be taken care of. And then also, um, the, uh, we will be revising the, legis the law with regard to uh, PAYGO so that it is fiscally sustainable in the out years. Um, there's been a requirement for a set aside from revenue growth that is not sustainable in the long term, and that will be fixed as well. All that's under what I call fiscal prudence. And then uh, finally, with regard to uh, tax revision, uh, we've worked with the Tax Revision Commission Chairman, uh, former Mayor Williams, and uh, what uh, will be in the budget and um, financial plan tomorrow will be a five-year phase-in of the recommendations of the Tax Revision Commission. There are a couple of things that the Commission recommended that we will not be doing, and that, that is um, increasing the general sales tax rate. We will not be doing that and establishing a head tax on employers, we will not be doing that. But otherwise, the plan that will be in the documents that I circulate will be um, almost entirely what the Tax Revision Commission is recommending 
phased in over five years. So for example, we will create we will create a new uh, income tax bracket, middle income tax bracket of forty to sixty thousand dollars. This is adjusted gross income. So this is not one's um, actual take home pay, but uh, after deductions and so forth. Uh, and that, uh, the mayor proposed a 7.5% rate next year. Uh, what I'll be circulating proposes a 7% rate, going to 6.5% in 2016. And except for um, adjusted gross income over a million dollars to lower the top rate that, uh, from 8.95% to 8.75% in 2016, increase the standard deduction in part in 2015 and to the federal level in 2017. Uh, lowering the business franchise rate, uh, the mayor proposed lowering it to 9.4%. Uh, our proposal would be uh, next year. Our proposal would take it to 9% in 2016, 8.75% in 2018, and 8.25% in 2019. Um, so phasing in over five years, the uh, reduction in the franchise tax rate. Um, the exemption with regard to the estate tax, I would like to do this more quickly, but we can't. Uh, the exemption would be doubled to $2 million in 2016 and to the federal level of $5.25 million in 2018. Um, we uh, maintain the mayor's recommendation with regard to um, exempting certain investment funds from the franchise tax. That's seen as a uh, incentive to generate business activity uh, because those businesses do not currently locate in the district. Uh, we expand the sales tax to six services, but not eight, as recommended by the Tax Revision Commission. It, we exclude the barber and beautician services, and we exclude home construction, which clearly would affect homeowners. And as I mentioned, we do not increase the general sales tax rate or establish, and we do not establish a head tax on employers. So um, we are, um, I would say, 90% uh, doing what the Tax Revision Commission has recommended. And the 10% we're not doing is mostly in the area of um, increasing taxes. The, um, uh, also included, this was in the Tax Revision Commission's recommendations, is um, increasing the earned income tax credit. That's for very low income earned wage earners. Uh, increasing the EITC, I think, I don't have the exact amount in front of me. Uh, again, there will be one reading on the Budget Request Act, and that's tomorrow, and two readings on the Budget Support Act. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. I wish that I could give you what the total amount is in tax relief, but we haven't quite calculated that yet. But it's a lot on an annual basis by 2019. Other questions from anybody? Is there a ballpark, I guess, of how close you get to the vision on a number basis? Um, this is really rough, but in the planning it is. Um, <clears throat> this is $175 million in relief, 20 in revenue, so it cost 154 mm -hmm. in the final year. Uh, in the final year, and this is an annual figure, um, the cost of the tax relief, because, you know, when we cut taxes, uh, we lose revenue, and refer, we refer to that as a tax expenditure. I know folks who pay taxes don't like it referred to as a cost, but from a budgeting perspective, it is a cost. The, um, the total tax relief will be um, a net of 150, almost $155 million on an annual basis. That is, um, the tax reductions will total about $175 million, and the um, increases such as expanding the sales tax to uh, six categories um, brings in 20 million almost 21 million so it's 175 in reductions 20 million 21 million in um, new revenue for a net of 150 a net reduction of 100 almost 155 million those are the current estimates and do you have the, do you think you have the, the votes for this tomorrow or do you expect uh, 
a lot of debate about this tomorrow. I do not know. I know that there's some members who are unhappy with certain parts of this. Uh, I would emphasize that this is a package. I think the greatest uh, benefit or value to uh, handling this as a package is that uh, this has really been um, worked, worked through by the Tax Revision Commission. They saw that these taxes, uh, where we could provide this tax relief, would have the greatest benefit uh, and spreading it between individuals who are residents of the district and businesses in the district. So it, it's a package that they recommended, and uh, um, we, unfortunately we can't do it all at once. And uh, phase again in over five years, and we worked on the timing of the different components, and uh, I, th I think that's the best way to get this done. Dorothy? Um, could you um, walk me through uh, what the budget for the uh, agencies under the purview of the Committee on Health are going to be? Um, in your remarks, you said the budget you're going to propose tomorrow funds the United Medical Center. However, in the report of the committee, they say the day after their markup of their budget, um, the Mayor's Budget Office removed $10 million in pay go funds from the United Medical Center, East End Medical Center project. Um, so United Medical Center is one issue. Then you also mentioned that you're taking care of the issue of the Humane Society relocation, which again was X'd out in the committee um, markup. And my third thing as regards to the, part, the Committee on Health budget is um, this uh, $1.2 million to the Nanny Helen Burroughs Housing Development Corporation. Um, so those three items, where do they stand? I know that there was some debate and discussion at the uh, budget um, meetings last week. So where do they stand right now? And if they are going to be in the budget, where is the money coming? Okay, three items. The first was uh, the reduction t in the capital budget to the United Medical Center. Uh, we, my recommendation will be s to sustain that reduction by the Committee on Health. And uh, the amount that would be in the budget for the capital improvement plan for the United Medical Center would be consistent with what uh, the, what the budget was that we adopted no, it will be consistent with what had been recommended prior to um, the month of March as well as what the consultant recommends. And I forget the exact amount, but it's, uh, if I, as I recall, something like $150 million for the United Medical Center. Uh, so we sustain the Health Committee's recommendation, and while it's a reduction, it's a reduction to the increase, an increase that was announced in March, and an increase that is inconsistent with what Huron consulting company Huron's recommendation was. I don't have that number in front of me. The, um, uh, with regard to the $10 million that the Health Committee uh, directed to two projects, one was the Humane Society and the other was uh, the Tennis Center on 16th Street, the um, mayor the day after the Health Committee's uh, markup uh, went in and took those monies, they were PAYGO dollars, and uh, shifted them to another project. He swapped PAYGO for general obligation bond money. This is very technical. It was a very technical move, maneuver that the uh, executive did, and in do so doing, made that $10 million unavailable. So that could not be in my recommendation. However, we found $5 million, and uh, which will go to the Humane Society. So that's why I say that the recommendation to fund the um, relocation of the Humane Society, that recommendation from the Health Committee will be sustained. With regard to the uh, project developer on Nanny Helen Burroughs, that is not in my recommendation. Other questions? Yes, Janetta. Mr. Chairman, uh, just to go back to the tax revision package of Fortad. Um, you're following the tax parity process that you all use. <clears throat> are you are you following that? Because I think that was not exactly. Okay. Because the tax parity process had tr triggers in it. That's what I was going to ask. We you. don't are have there triggers. Any triggers in this. Okay, no. great. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, also, with respect to uh, your approval of um, 
money within the within the um, education uh, budget you're recommending to follow the committee's recommendation for education so yes. this include the 62 million dollars that the committee had uh, suggested transferring from Spingarn to other projects correct okay uh, just wanted to clear on that and then uh, with respect to the mayor's uh, I think the mayor submitted a supplemental budget yes uh, what is the deal on the supplemental budget? Because uh, that's affecting, you just mentioned that he snatched $10 million from, and was that snatched for 2015, or was it snatched for 2014? What, what adjustments has he made for this year's budget? Do you have that in front of you? I don't have that in front of me. Um, we made some adjustments. I'm, I'm recommending some adjustments to the supplemental, and at the moment I can't uh, recall what a single one of them is. Um, the, um, in that supplemental, the mayor proposed shifting a number of FY14 dollars into FY15. As I recall, we don't reverse that. Um, Wait, he wanted, there was money for uh, 14 projects that he no. now wants to, oh, he wants to take money. There was, there was uh, unspent dollars in FY14 that uh, he, in the supplemental, proposes to shift to 2015 to support his budget, and we don't reverse that. Uh, it does, it, it presents a problem, particularly if revenues decline, start to decline, and at the, hope, at the moment, uh, nobody's thinking that revenues are going to start to decline. Uh, because what it means is that our spending next year is greater than the revenues next year. It's sustained by moving roughly $100 million from 14 into 15. And you don't make any adjustments to that? I mean, to me, I think that's bad budgeting, but that's my, that's my own opinion. Uh, well, there are two ways of looking at it. One is, as you put it, and the other is, as you know, at the end of the year when the CAFR comes out, um, and it's announced that we have a surplus of 320 million or whatever, and everybody says we should spend it. Um, well, rather than wait till next February to spend it, uh, through the supplemental, it's being spent now. Okay. And it, but it's dollars that have been identified. The the, C, the CFO's revenue estimates identify those dollars. Okay. Uh, one last thing for me, and that is on this the debt service, which is amazing to me that you said the debt service will be greater than the amount that you can borrow in 2017, 2018. Is that accurate, the way I'm saying it? It's in 2018. It's in 2018, not 2017. Correct. Okay, all right. And is there any movement on your part to uh, to look at uh, raising the debt, uh, the debt ceiling, which might bring some relief in this area? I think that would be a uh, very serious mistake, to raise the debt ceiling. Uh, our debt ceiling, which is 12%, is um, way above what other states or municipalities uh, borrow, way above. And uh, that's even when you look at it on a combined basis of taking a state and a city together, 12% is way above that. Um, the district is unique, and that's why we argue that uh, the 12% is reasonable. The, um, uh, I, I personally believe, though, that uh, we do not we do not give the same rigorous scrutiny to the capital budget that uh, we do to the operating budget. And as a result, um, we uh, borrow, f either borrow, spend, borrow to spend more on projects than we would otherwise, or that um, we include projects that maybe are not the most important. That's why I think it's important that we have a 15-year plan that focuses on infrastructure so that we can realize that when um, I want to uh, put uh, $5 million into my pet project, I am preventing that $5 million from going into replacing uh, the water pipes or undergrounding lines or replacing a school that's 40 years old. And I shouldn't say replacing, but renovating a school that's 40 years old or name other infrastructure needs. I mean, you remember this building, the Wilson building that we're in, we got to the point with deferred maintenance where people were told not to drink from the drinking fountains. That's right, I remember that. And uh, uh, rather than do maintenance and renovation on a reactive basis, 
after the need becomes inescapable, we should do this in an orderly, proactive, planned basis. And that's what I'm trying to do by requiring this 15-year plan. Uh, the numbers on the uh, medical center, uh, it, we, we're leaving $135 million in the budget for that. Uh, Martin. So um, the mayor sent you a letter yesterday, a long letter kind of expressing his disagreements with some of the things that have been, some of the committee recommendations on the budget. One thing he mentioned is that you guys are violating your own, own rules against earmarks. I uh, just wanted to get a response from you on that. And could, could you also just flesh out the, um, the proposal for the middle income tax bracket a little bit again? The, um, with regard to earmarks, uh, I think the, uh, the mayor's letter overstates that issue. And I would also note that uh, earmarks uh, typically are uh, the ones that we've gotten in trouble in in the past have involved um, the private sector. And uh, the instances he cites, which I believe include a uh, public charter school, is not, a, uh, not the private sector. Remember, the public charter schools are part of our public education system. Uh, but the, uh, we have a provision in the Budget Support Act that requires that uh, grants be uh, issued on a competitive basis and that certain other standards be met. And uh, um, I'm, I'm comfortable that uh, what we have going in my recommendation uh, is nowhere close to what the mayor is describing as uh, these earmarks. Uh, Dorothy had brought up uh, one item which involved uh, a housing project but uh, that's not in my recommendation. Uh, with regard to the middle income bracket, the uh, Tax Revision Commission looked at, among other things, our income tax, and in looking at our income tax, looked at the progressivity of that. And progressivity, as I'm sure you know, is the concept that people who earn more should pay a higher percentage of their income. Maybe not grossly higher percentage, but still a higher percentage, so if you're poor, maybe 4%. And if you're wealthy, maybe 8%. And uh, that's progressivity. And in looking at progressivity under our current tax structure, they found that uh, there were folks in uh, what we would call, uh, I would call working, working class range, um, which is uh, forty to $60,000, where they're actually paying a higher percentage than somebody who's very wealthy. So they proposed creating this new bracket that's forty to sixty thousand dollars and to have a lower rate. My recollection, I say recollection because I don't have my note right in front of me, is that they propose six and a half percent rate rather than the current eight point nine five percent. And so that's what we have in the recommendation. I want to note that um, when we lower the rate for somebody earning between forty and sixty thousand dollars, we also lower the tax that everybody above that pays for that portion of their income. So if I earn $190,000 a year, um, I'm going to pay the highest rate on that which is in the top bracket, uh, but I will see a reduction in my tax for that portion of my income between forty and 60000 And um, I would say at the low end of the scale, even though it's a 4% rate, uh, we have the Earned Income Tax Credit. We also have um, um, Schedule H. We have a number of mechanisms that effectively reduce the tax that low-income people would have to pay. And the Earned Income Tax Credit is actually a what we call a refundable credit. So if I am working and I qualify for the EITC, I may actually get a check from the district rather than uh, paying any tax or paying no tax. I just wanted to explain one thing. So the way you all have um, created this new tax bracket is, is that it, it begins at the upper, the upper bracket begins at the upper rate begins at 60. Is, is that what you're saying? So, so if I'm in the upper different. rate, if I'm in the upper, a higher income earner, you don't apply the upper rate until you hit, until my, um, at the 60% and above, is that the way? Uh, right now, the top rate is 8.95 percent, mm -hmm. and it starts at income over forty thousand dollars. Yeah. 
I'm wrong. 8.9% over 40,000. It's 8.5% over 40,000. It's 8.95% over 350,000. And so now the adjustment that you're making is the 8.9% over 60,000. No. Or 8.5% um, In 2019, okay. it might be a little bit earlier, it will look like this. I gave the year at the beginning. It will look like this. Um, at $40,000, the tax rate will be 6%. At $60,000, the tax rate will be... You bring it down, don't we? At 40000 it's 6.5%. 6.5, right. At 60000 it's 8.5. 8.5. And at 350000 that's why the budget director is here. Did you hear that? Right, yeah, yeah, but, but that's okay, so the forty thousand. My confusion. The confusion I have is that what you just said is that there's this little piece. If you're an, a high wage earner, there's this little section here where your income may drop. The only way that would happen is that if you are only applying the higher rate after certain levels. So that's why I'm asking you: Are you? Applying Remember, this is adjusted gross income. So this is after you've done all the deductions, the personal exemption, anything else that would adjust your income. And uh, so the, the rate at 40000 which today is 8.95, would be uh, 6%. And the rate at, uh, at uh, beginning at 60000 would be 8.5%. Right now it's 8.95. And the rate at a million dollars would remain 8.95. So between 60000 and a million, it's 8.5%. Yes. And right now it's 8.95. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So we're providing relief at so that end. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. Gotcha. Thank you. And that's uh, uh, other than keeping it at 8.95 for those over a million, it's consistent with the Tax Revision Commission's recommendations. I'd actually like to see another middle income bracket in there, but. Uh, all this has a uh, revenue reduction cost to it, and uh, is therefore hard to hard to do. Did you have another question? Uh, what was the uh, the final recommendation on the wildlife center? Was that wrapped up with the humane society? Yeah, uh, the uh, committees. It's not. It doesn't have. The question has to do with the wildlife. It's not a center. It's um. It's to deal with. Uh, injured wildlife and uh, we there was money in this year's budget for that my recollection is that it's two hundred thousand dollars for next year uh, to have it in the district rather than to be utilizing a uh, service that's way out in the uh, in the suburbs and uh, the committee's recommendation is sustained and uh, that's separate from the humane society then the, the recommendation on the package of Film tax credits somewhere in under business. There were some, a couple of changes recommended to that. Uh, what's the final recommendation on how much money goes to the film tax credits above and beyond what the administration um, supported? At the moment, there's, uh, if I remember correctly, about $1.6 million in the film fund. Does that include any from uh, Chairman Orange's committee, or is that? It's an adjustment from what uh, had uh, been recommended. So it's still 1.6 million above the mayor's recommendation. No, it's 1.6 million. Oh. I believe the mayor's recommendation was one, and uh, it's increased slightly. Um, that number hasn't been completely worked out. Um, Mr. Orange, he's taking $1.2 million from adult job training, $100,000 from employee services workforce development, and $300,000 for year-round youth program workforce development. For a total of $1.6 million in terms of job training from the Department of Employment Services to fund his film incentive fund, is this a policy recommendation well it's a budget it's clearly it's in the budget but this is also is this something you feel comfortable with policy wise taking dollars from the department of employment services that is supposed to be 
used for workforce development and job training to fund this film incentive fund? Uh, that's not in the recommendation I'll be circulating. So where is the $1.6 million coming from that you just mentioned to Aaron then? And I said 1.6. Um, there's a, a million that's in the budget that the mayor submitted, right. and there's 500,000 that was uh, found by another committee. Uh, and as I said, that number's not final, but the, um, the cuts from training that you identified, that's not going to be in my recommendation. So the $500,000 comes from Bowser's committee you're talking about? Is that the I believe so. So Mr. Orange's recommendation would have added an additional $1.6 million by taking these funds from the Department of Employment Services, and that is not going to be included in the final budget? Correct. Any further questions? I have Ma Martin? Uh, not on budget? Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, we'll come back to you in a second, Martin. Yes, yes, Dorothy. Um, I, I have a budget question. How would, as a long time observer of budgets in the council, how would you describe this budget process? I'm not sure how to answer that. How would you describe uh, this budget process? Well, it, it seems to me, what, what I find very interesting is, is that you look at committees that um, fall within <coughs> Ms. Alexander's committee, and she essentially um, took funding from, um, from her health committee, I'm sorry, her health committee, of the, or tried to take $11.9 million to fund a number of essentially Ward 7 projects. Um, the Fort Davis Recreation Center, the Nanny Helen Burroughs yes. Development Corporation, the Kelly Middle Tennis Court, yes. the Hillcrest Recreation Center. Um, so rather than, I think that traditionally, you know, the committee over health has looked at reallocating or moving money that is allocated to health to other health entities, and instead it seems as though in some instances, as, as, as regards to Mr. Um, Alexander became political football that she could use to fund um, some of her pet projects. And Mr. Uh, I'm trying to answer your question. Saying in terms of raising the Department of Employment Services that belongs within his committee to fund his pet project, the film and sales fund. And then Mr. Castanier turns around and uses money that was earmarked for uh, spend on to um, fund capital projects and other projects um, that um, were not funded, in some instances not funded at all, such as the Palisades Library. Um, the, I guess my question is then about to, did the budget process become exceedingly political, more political than normal? Your estimation or is this the Well, I don't think there's anything you're mentioning that hasn't been mentioned in previous years with regard to the council's action on the budget, nor are you mentioning anything that hasn't been mentioned with regard to other legislatures and budgets. Um, it is a fact that with the budget that the mayor sent down this year, there were um, a couple of projects in that budget, such as Spingarn and um, the United Medical Center, the increase in the United Medical Center that uh, were, I'll say, controversial and not supported by members, and therefore, in not supporting those projects, there were quite a number of dollars that were freed up on the capital side that could be reallocated. But as you know, what folks say all the time is that in the budget process, the legislature should either accept the priorities as the executive suggests them or adopt its own priorities. And that is what we see here in the budget. The fact is, is that while one could say that a school in one's ward is, I'll say, funding a school in one's ward is political favoritism, on the other hand, it is a public school, part of our public education system that provides a public service to the residents of the district. And uh, you could 
fault me for um, funding the renovation of a rec center in my ward. Uh, but on the other hand, that is a public use, a pub for, for DC citizens. And uh, if the need is there, it's completely appropriate to fund it. So the, how the dollars are being recommended by the committees, which I'm sustaining, how the dollars are being recommended, in my view, is appropriate. It's public facilities for a public purpose with a public value meeting a public need. Completely appropriate. And if you think and if you think it's unusual that this is happening, it happens every year, not just with this legislature, but with every legislature. And if you think that there was maybe a little bit more of it this year, that might be because there were a couple of projects, such as Spin Guard, which is not canceled, it's pushed off. And there's a, a good case to be made that uh, Spin Guard, which is next to Phelps, which is under enrolled, and Spin Guard right now is closed, and that the need for it perhaps can't come online in the next year or two. So push it out and use those dollars for other schools that where the parents are clamoring for um, renovation or modernization of their school. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that uh, the process is completely appropriate, and that is in prioritizing. And the fact that the council may have priorities that are different than the executive branch, that should not be a surprise. Um, and again, this is all um, for a public purpose, public schools, public recreation. Off a of budget, Martin. So on Friday, you guys got the details of the DC United Stadium deal. Did you get a chance to look over the details, and do you have any comment on what the, the mayor's office sent down to you? Uh, I have not looked in detail at what the mayor sent down, and I have not discussed it yet with members. We're focused on the budget vote tomorrow. Um, I think that's all I'll say at the moment with regard to the, the soccer deal. Uh, I'm hesitating because you know there are a number of issues that are in play, but I think it's premature for me to speak to that. Well, then can you just give us a sense of what has to be done legislatively to make the kind of seal the deal when it comes to the stadium? Like, what do you guys have to do? Well, uh, the bill, I have not even looked at the bill yet for referral. And um, my guess is that the bill involves a number of committees and therefore probably will have multiple referrals, a sequential referral. And uh, the uh, council, the one or more committees to which it's referred will have to have hearings on the bill, and uh, we will take that up. Can I just ask a question regarding yes, and then uh, and then I'll excuse you all. First, I would like to get your opinion on 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 just the the, the deal as you have read. I'm sure you've read newspaper articles about, and you you know generally the the kind of the structure of the deal. And then secondly, um, the money would have to be appropriated. Is, is money in the budget, in the out year budget for this uh, project, uh, for relocating, for rebuilding the reef center, for doing the infrastructure around the space that they're talking about? It's, it's not in the budget that we're considering tomorrow. And I do not know to what extent it needs to be in, in a budget. I don't understand that answer. What do you mean you don't? Uh, I believe that uh, part of the economics uh, are that uh, by um, swapping the Reeve Center, the district government receives a payment, and that payment, of course, offsets costs. You don't think that that includes, that, that now, covers all the costs, Mr. Mendel? For, first of all, I know you don't believe that. If you want to have a discussion with me, I'm not going to do that right now. And second of all, as I said before, uh, I'm limiting how much I'm commenting on the stadium today. We're focused on the budget for tomorrow. And uh, I have not sat down and looked at the bill. I'm limited in how much I can talk about it. I believe the bill was submitted on Friday. And when will a copy of it be available in legislative services? Uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, the, um, I'm told that the, uh, it'll be on the log for June 3rd. I think that's what I'm being told. 
I, I don't know how quickly it will be available. We try to make these documents available as quickly as possible. There's a process when it comes down. It came down late Friday. It has not hit my desk yet for the referral. Um, and then, it, as you know, after, after that, it can be circulated. Out on recess. What is the timetable then for consideration? I can't speak to that. The fact that you're asking the question raises the issue that uh, this is coming late in the legislative in this council period. You never answered my other question. I, I said I would like your general opinion about uh, the soccer deal. I mean, as generally structured. I know you said you had some concerns several months ago when it was first uh, floated about this whole swap of the, the Reeves building. And, and so I'm just wondering, you know, even though you may not have read all the details of the legislation. Generally. What I've said in the past is that uh, I, I think it's appropriate that the district uh, expend dollars on what we are calling horizontal costs, which is uh, site acquisition that we maintain the site, you know, maintain ownership of the site, and uh, some site preparation. I think that that's appropriate. And uh, with regard to uh, what they call the vertical costs, which is the construction of the stadium, that uh, I don't think that uh, we should be um, uh, contributing any uh, significant amount of money for that. And uh, I am uh, wary of any um, tax abatements because the value in stimulating economic development is that we stimulate uh, revenues to the district. Thank you all very much. Uh, and again, the uh, council will be meeting tomorrow one vote on the Budget Request Act. Thank you.